Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. Our guest for today is an author, game designer, and host of the Board Game Design Lab podcast, Gabe Barrett. How are you doing today, sir? Andrew, doing great, sir. Really appreciate you having me on. Awesome. So what's what's your podcast about? So I, uh, I do a weekly show where I interview game designers and people in publishing and just uh, people around the board game industry about various t- uh, topics. We go into different things about design or manufacturing or shipping, all sorts of stuff, uh, and just get a really like in-depth dive on specific topics in all the all the world of game design. Awesome! It's it's a fantastic show. I mean, I am sure. technically a game designer, but even to a regular person who just likes games, it's still a fascinating show. You get to kind of learn the behind the scenes stuff and the kind of human part of it, which I really love about the board game design industry versus like video game design industry is everything is still done by hand in a, in a way that's a lot more, more kind of romantic in a way. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, who did this thing and you can follow them on Twitter and interact with them on Twitter. Cause it's like a very small tight knit group of very open, very passionate people. It's, I don't know. There's nothing else I've ever experienced like it. I, I love that industry. It's really cool. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, you're you're never going more than likely never going to be able to sit down and talk to Steven Spielberg or George Lucas or any of these like major figures in movies or even you know even video games. It's hard to even know like who is behind most video games unless it's you know Mario or something. You know, those games where have like very specific figurehead. Right. But in board games, you can sit down and talk to some of the greatest designers on the planet at conventions, you know, or, or even just reaching out to them online. They're very very approachable. Like you're saying, because the industry is so small, it's 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 a really tight knit community. And yeah, I love being a part of it. Yeah. Yeah, and each of those individuals is like such an iconic person. It it is like yeah. you were saying with Mario, like Shigeru Miyamoto. It's like there's just a ton of people like that where it's like this totally iconic person who you know exactly what games they've made and mm-hmm. you know what their style is like, but then they're going to be working with this other person who you also know and they're both going to be on your podcast. It's like it's really cool. I don't know. It's there's yeah. a lot of synergy in that in that group. It's it's really cool. Yeah. And very very welcoming as well. I kind oh, yeah, of definitely. I kind of lucked out and just ran into Julio Nazario at a mm-hmm. uh, a board game meetup, and he's like, oh, you know, here's the game I'm prototyping. I'm like, oh, I I design games. Oh my god! And uh, then we carpooled together to Gen Con, and like, I don't know, it's it's really cool to like just kind of stumble into these people in real life, and then find out there's this whole online community, and it's been a magical experience so far with the uh, the game design world for sure. And your podcast yeah. is a big part of that. I definitely recommend it to to anyone because everyone likes some kind of board game, right? We are gathered here today to talk about Star Wars, which is an entire universe of possibilities for theme parks. Yeah, Um, we'll be here two weeks. So this is the two-week episode. (laughs) Yeah, our first two-week episode. Here we go. Uh, We've decided to kind of break this. I got my space diaper on and everything, man. I'm good to go. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. (laughs) That's an element I want to see explored more in Star Wars is the... uh, the toilet situation. I know That's there right. are Where toilets. do these people poop? Do they poop? <laughs> Maybe they don't poop. Maybe they're in like this, like, I, I would say future, but we know it happened a long time ago. Right. Like, humans anyway, hadn't evolved um, the digestive system yet. <laughs> That's right. Um, I'm not exactly sure if that's the case, but, but yeah. I wish we digress. It would be kind of interesting to see if in maybe in the future they start doing more like comedy movies set in the Star Wars universe where you can really start to learn more about toilets. Or maybe just documentaries about... Um, That's what we need. We need mockumentaries uh-huh. oh, about that'd be bathrooms cool. on you know certain right. spaceships and the Star Destroyer's like, plumbing system. Like, how does, how does really... that work? You know, Honestly, The Death Star like, had all these advancements uh-huh. in plumbing and sanitation <laughs> or something like that, maybe. Yeah, where do the stormtroopers sleep? Like, there's all kinds of yeah. logistical things I'm curious about. How long does it take to get that armor off so you can poop? Uh-huh. You know? Uh, <laughs> these questions need to be answered. Like, we... we I feel like we we deserve to know. Well, obviously, Gabe is interested in uh, space stuff, and so he makes a fantastic guest <laughs> for this episode. And you also happen to be working on a, a space board game, right? A dexterity game. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's called the Final Flick Tier. It's a dexterity game where you're flicking dice. The dice in the game are your spaceships, and you've got these different factions vying for control of of the galaxy. And these neoprene mats make these this really Ooh. cool uh, galaxy out. You know. Uh, game board basically uh-huh. and you're, it's, it's a 4x game and so it's a 4x game that plays in about an hour and so you get that 4x you know you can scratch that itch without taking up your whole game night and it's super easy to to learn and it's a lot of fun to play and you're just flicking your ships around the galaxy blowing other ships up and, and building stuff and expanding exploring all the 4x stuff what are the and other two x's so, just for anyone who might not know explore, yeah expand. so explore expand exterminate and exploit 
And so you're you're taking resources, you're you're blowing stuff up, you're you know expanding your your empire and exploring new worlds. And it's it's been a lot of fun to develop, and I've been having a lot of fun playtesting it and getting a lot of really good feedback. And uh, yeah, going to Kickstarter October 29th. Awesome, which is today, I believe. Um, that's yeah, very exciting. <laughs> dropping this episode absolutely. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Basically, if it's November and you're hearing this, it's on Kickstarter right now. Final cool. flick tier. Fantastic. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, um. So for Star Wars, I've decided to make this kind of a multi-part thing so that we're, we don't have to do that two-week episode, at least not yet. Although that it would be kind of fun doing like a, a lock-in, like a live... Two weeks is a little long, though. Maybe Two weeks is a little long. A fortnight, a... you might say. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with just the outer rim. Um, you don't have to be a total nerd and know what that actually means, but it's just a way of splitting up the Star Wars canonical map. Um, it's just the stuff that's that's the farthest away from the what they call the core systems. Um, so it's just kind of the outskirts of space, which I know it's in three dimensions, but we're just going off of this map, and it's a two-dimensional map, and it's eh, the outer outer rim stuff is labeled as outer rim, and that's what we're going to be dealing with. So we've got what here, thirteen planets or moons, I believe. Eh, 12. Yeah, it's a bunch. 12 or 13. So that is still a lot for a single episode of Amusement Sparks, but hopefully we can just, you know, get the best delights from each one of those those spaces. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like we could even probably just focus on the real core. I mean, there's really like a core four. Sure. That like, the, you know, like I don't know that we need the full 12 slash 13, but like, because there's probably really cool elements from a lot of them that could be combined. Yes. You know, if this is going to be a real thing, which obviously one day it will be. And uh-huh. I think they're actually building a Star Wars theme park. I think Disney yeah, Disney's is, is working putting on, it together. There's one that's going to California and one to Florida. Oh. Um, oh, wow. And the Florida one's wow. getting a hotel that looks super amazing. A resort, sorry. It's not just a hotel. Mm-hmm. But it's all kind of role-playing, very amusement sparks kind of things. Like you inhabit the role of a person and your your decisions supposedly follow you throughout the park. And the only example I've heard so far is that, like, if you do a um, spaceship piloting attraction and you do poorly at it, then you go to the cantina and they might give you a hard time about that. Like, they'll (laughs) they'll know basically what your score was and be like, well, you know, I heard you you totaled your ship or whatever. That that's uh, unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, This I heard you were a nerf herder. (laughs) uh, We don't serve your kind around here. (laughs) Right. (laughs) <laughs> scruffy looking nerf herder <laughs> um but there's a lot of excitement that i think is going to actually happen at that the star wars theme park the the thing i'm most excited about is is seeing how they execute the star wars universe which is a very unfriendly cold and dangerous place um through the disney lens which is like the most amazing guest service in the world how are they going to do that like how are you going to have a rude bartender who is also a disney employee and like um, you know, can do all those amazing things that Disney employees can do. I think it's going to be a weird kind of disconnect in a way, but it'll make you feel more immersed, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. I have a friend that used to work at Disney, and she told me about like, I had like a two week or three week onboarding process of like just learning the Disney way. Wow. And so, like, every day going to class, learning how to, how to tuck your shirt in, how to like all the, like the craziest stuff. But all of it really good, which creates this amazing atmosphere that they're going for. Mm-hmm. And so that's a really good point. Like, how do you like have people that go through that process and then be mean to you on purpose right. you know, and call you a nerf herder and, you know, yeah. bring the theme out? That's going to be really interesting. Or maybe they just hire normal people. Maybe they don't do the onboarding. They're oh. just like, all right, here, here's our team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they'll put you through the uh, culture. There's a master, like, observer in each room who's, like, undercover as, like, making sure everyone has is having an amazing time. And then everyone else yeah. can just be themselves and be in character and... Oh, I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, for this for this park and for Disney's actual real life one, there's going to have to be some method of getting from planet to planet. Generally, that's, you know, why we evolved um, to have spaceships back in the day. Um, so, yeah. Do we want to do that kind of thing where it's like an area is a planet and then there's an attraction that feels like a spaceship that takes you to another one? Is that a, an easy starting point, you think, or do you have any yeah, other methods? Yeah, I think methods? so. I think breaking things up, kind of the way they've already, like Disney's already been breaking stuff up, mm-hmm. where you can go to the Animal Kingdom, you can go to Epcot, you can go to like all these different places, mm-hmm. and yeah, having a really cool thematic way of getting from point A to point B, or maybe a couple different ways. You sure. know, maybe one is the Rebel way, one is the, the Empire way, or something like That's that, cool. so you've got different things going on. Uh-huh. Uh, especially if, it, if, if you're like a character, right? So if you're a Stormtrooper, you can't take the Rebel uh, spaceship to yes. get to Dagobah or to get to Yavin or anything like that. Oh, so cool. yeah, having 
multiple ways to get there, I think is a really good way to go. And maybe like one's a little bit faster, but one's a little bit cooler, you know, and mm-hmm. so like make it different, you know, don't, don't just have a and B and we painted one black and we painted one red, you know, like yeah. make them more thematic and different. Especially when you have so many cool iconic ships, like, Oh yeah. It'd be a shame to miss out on having all the empire ships available. Cause you just want to look, you know, go from the rebel perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then also there's just some like ground rules that I think are good to start with. It's like, um, the other thing is what point in the Star Wars history do we want this to be set in? Because there are going to be different things. Like, is it Rebels versus Empire? Is the New Order there? Is it the Old Republic? You know what I mean? There's so many different, like, awesome trends or, or different phases of the Star Wars history that have happened. Um, but, and I want to hear your perspective on this, but my initial thought was it's easier to look back on the past than kind of have cameos from characters who haven't happened yet in in the future so maybe setting it a little later in the in the canon and then you can still have references to those who came before either through like force ghosts or through i don't know attractions and stuff named after these historic legendary figures who might have died 100 years ago but there's yeah. still someone who the the park guests want to hear about and experience and interact with if they can what do you think about yeah, the that's time? a really good question yeah because i mean disney came in just recently, I mean, within the last few years. Yeah. And so, like, their main IP, I guess you might say, their their content uh-huh. is within the last few years. Right. Um, the sequel trilogy. And so, theirs is all New Order and BB-8. Yeah. And, yeah. But at the same time, the people bringing their kids there, or even grandkids at this point, yeah. grew up with the original trilogy. Right. Or grew up with the older stuff. And so, like, they're the ones with the money. Mm-hmm. And so, even <laughs> though, like, the kids now are like, yeah, like, you know, Kylo Ren, and I, I like this cool lightsaber. It's like, yes. But back in my day, <laughs> Luke Skywalker was the guy, you know, and mm-hmm. so you need to kind of play to both because, you know, one is, is going to be one dem- demographic is going to be these kids and like seeing the new stuff and all the cool, you know, Finn and all the, these cool new characters. But the people with the money, the people buying the tickets, yeah. they've got that nostalgia thing going on. Oh, and totally. so you got to find a way to blend it, I believe. Yeah. OK, that's cool. And you could do some kind of thing. And this isn't something I've seen much of this in the Star Wars universe, but you can do some kind of wormhole time travel um, you know, stuff gets kind of freaky in space. Like maybe you accidentally go through a rift and now you're in the the original trilogy or this area over here is the prequel trilogy and this area over here is the sequel trilogy. You could do something like that if we if we wanted to. If there's a certain time yeah. period on this planet that's much more interesting than anything else, we could try to set it in that, that way. Because, Absolutely. But yeah, go ahead. Another interesting thing is that a lot of the planets in the old... Well, I say old, the original trilogy oh. aren't necessarily used in the new one. Right. Right. And so like, uh, you have to correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but like Yavin and, and Dagobah and, uh, indoor. Right. I don't think they're anywhere in the new stuff. And so you could have their own areas mm-hmm. that are nostalgia, they're old school. And then Tatooine would be interesting. Cause you could, ha- you'd have to figure out a way to kind of have both going on. Cause Tatooine has been used so many different yeah, times true. Uh, and maybe have different zones, different areas and different, you know, and maybe you, like once you walk into Tatooine, it's from the original, you know, Luke Skywalker at the bar, you know, that kind of thing. And then as you progress through Tatooine, it gets newer and newer and newer. And so like as you walk through it, you're basically walking through the 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 history, so to speak, and, and coming into the present where you have Ray and, and kind of other stuff going on. Cool. I really like that. If if we're if we were going to say that everyone all the park guests are in the role of like a force user, then you could do a thing where it's like they're kind of getting glimpses of what happened in the past or glimpses of what happened in the future, especially in a place like Tatooine where there's yeah. a lot of like history there. They could be in the the newer timeline and then get these kind of glimpses and visions of the past where there's basically this, a scene being acted out um, from the original trilogy. And it's just kind of in that blue glow, like you're seeing it through the force or through a force memory or whatever. But not every single part guest is going to be a force user. You know, some of them are going to be stormtroopers. Like they're, not going to have any access to the force. So that wouldn't work quite as well as I had thought earlier. Like, Oh, just have force ghosts of everybody and you can interact with them or force spirits. I think is the official canon term. Now they're not called force Mm. ghosts. Um, I want to be PC here. Um, (laughs) (laughs) but, but yeah, so that force spirit thing doesn't work for everyone anymore, but yeah. The Four Spirits is actually the uh, liquor store that's in uh, <laughs> Los Angeles. Yeah, oh, the, uh, that, Four Spirits. That's good. <laughs> oh, that's good. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> There's more where that came from, my good friend. I'm excited. I have so many puns written down ready for this. <laughs> Once I saw the, the final flick the final flick tier, I was like, oh, yep. man, 
there's going to be a lot of puns in this episode. Oh, yeah. This is my game. And now, and going back to my game, the reason I called it that, though, is, is actually more than just a pun. And so there's so many games. There's like 100 games coming out a month in the board game world right now. And so it's important to have a title that tells people right off the bat what it is. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the front of my game, you go, okay, this is space, it's and it's fun. a dexterity game. It's a final flick. Okay, space dexterity. Do I? Is this a game I'm interested in? Yes, I pick it up. No, I walk on by. And so I'm basically right. I'm trying to save people time because <laughs> I've I've picked up so many games. I was like, oh, this has got to be the coolest, most thematic game ever. And I pick it up and I look at the back and it's like, oh, this is a random abstract strategy game with a theme just pasted on. Yep. Uh, wasting my time. I know. So I'm trying not to waste people's time. <laughs> Man, that's that's the thing at, at gaming conventions is like the front of the box can get you so good and then you pick it up and you're like, oh, I, I do not like games like this. Yeah. Like, the yeah. art is so good. Like the art is one of the first things I go for. It, the The cover of the book totally grabs my attention. And then if it's, yeah, like you said, if it's pasted on, it's not well integrated. It's like, well, yep. eh. Let down. Yeah, but, and that's really cool. I wish more games were like that where it's like cut and dry. Here's this type of game. Um, yep. cause like you said, it's a huge marketplace and being as, as fair to the consumers, you know, respectful of their time as possible. That's, uh, that's the way to do it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right. But back into right. the, uh, back into star Wars. Let's just, let's just start where it all started. Let's start Tatooine. Love it. That's what I was going to yeah. recommend as well. So yeah, cool. this is, uh, the world of, you know, the Skywalkers, Jawas, uh, Tusken Raiders, all of that the stuff. Huts. The Huts, yeah, the Huts kind of rule. This like criminal syndicate is basically ruling this planet that's very desolate, and there's no vegetation, and there's hardly any, uh, you know, liquid. People are are moisture farmers on this planet, yeah. which speaks to uh, what it would be like to live there. <laughs> Just pretty <laughs> hardcore stuff, and it's it's really well hidden from the Empire and the Rebellion. Like nobody cares about Tatooine. Right. Which makes it a really fun place uh, for us to start because we care about it so much, you know. As <laughs> right. as people, well, it's, it's only it only gets greener from here. Is the way I was thinking about it. <laughs> That's why. Right? But there's so many cool things you can do because I mean, you have so much. Like we were saying earlier, you have so much history. Mm -hmm. And so the way I was thinking about it is, if you have like these main sections and have like one really awesome main attraction, one main ride or something like that, and in Tatooine, you could have a really amazing roller coaster that's. You have a couple actually, but one that's like a pod a pod racer. Race, that's where I was right? going. You're, you're in there, yeah, and every Boom every car ease. in the roller coaster is a pod racer. You know, looks like Anakin's mm. from Episode One. Oh man! And, and you're going, you know, it's just really really interesting. And you, if, if you have the park in somewhere like San Diego or something like that, you can kind of have that heat, you know, where uh -huh. it's not like overwhelming, and it's not humid, and you make sure you have plenty of those fans that like shoot the mist out. I love those. Oh yeah, those I just want to stand in front of those. Uh, <laughs> when I go to Six Flags, and when I'm in Atlanta, going to Six Flags, I just want to stand and like live in front of one of those misting fans. Uh -huh. So you have plenty of those, but you could have like the heat still there, uh -huh. and kind of feel that desert sense, you know, get That's that sense cool. of the desert without it being 150 degrees. And uh, I feel like yeah, riding the pod racer and kind of having the the roller coaster set up like a canyon, you know, and and then maybe uh, what was the the name of the the little like triangular shaped ships like a T T thirteen T one thirteen something like that, that that Luke used to ride around in and shoot womp rats. Yeah, I can't I remember think the it's name. T thirteen. I think that's it. Yeah, I see. used to you know whatever it was bullseye womp rats on a, yeah. in my T thirteen or something like that. Yeah. Right, and so you could have another ride that's you're in one of those kinds of things, and you're going through a very similar canyon, you know, area, and and you could basically have a, a dual purpose set, mm -hmm. right? So you have one part of the set that's for the pod racing roller coaster another one for the t13 uh, you know not spaceship but just like a little i don't know what do you call it transporter sure. and you're going around and maybe maybe there's womp rats sit up around and, and you know they they fall down and things like that totally. i think we could have fun oh that's awesome <laughs> i i kind of like the idea of well this is one of the things i always do when i'm first trying to wrap my head around which which set pieces from the movies would make really good mm -hmm. theme park stuff I think about video games I've played and then also Lego sets I've played with because those, yeah. those you know, whoever's making a video game of, of episode one, they're going to make, you know, the pod racer video game. And then people who are designing the Lego sets are going to make the coolest looking scenes and the coolest looking ships. And yeah, those are just great places to start. But yeah, pod racers would be fantastic. The video game was really fun. And just racing and roller coasters go really well hand in hand. And there's so many different iconic pod racers too, which would be kind of cool to be able to, yeah. you know, maybe make some decisions about which one you're going to take or what your strategy is going to be. And I know on a traditional roller coaster, that's not always possible, but I like those coasters where there's like, it's kind of like a race and there are different outcomes that can happen. The, yeah. the red coaster doesn't win every single time. It's there's some level of variability. If we could do something like that, I yeah. think that'd be pretty awesome. 
And no, I agree. That'd be really cool. To Luke, um, when he says, uses the word bullseye, that's like what he's talking about when he has to go number two. He just kind of <laughs> leans over the side, and that's how he goes to the restroom in outer space. There you go. Now we're back to using the bathroom <laughs> on spaceships. And I feel like it's going to keep coming back to this. So I, I'm happy about that. I hope so. We need to tie it into every attraction. Those two attractions work really well. I think most Eisley we definitely have to do something for. Most definitely. Um, yep. You know, just have the, the cantina, the bar, the musicians not allowing droids to come in. Yep. Um, oh, that's a good point. So if you're thematically, if you're a droid, yeah. you're not allowed in. Right. You know, if you if you want to be a little R2-D2, then you can't go in this... Uh, this restaurant or this bar. That'd be really fun. It'd be cool. And it would also be neat if there's some kind of like little quests or little side uh, missions you can get into in a kind of role playing kind of terminology where maybe there's this one droid who really needs to deliver a message to someone in the cantina, but he can't get access. And so he might just pull aside some random passerby and say, Hey, you know, can you help me? I'll give you a hundred Republic credits or whatever. um, If you can get this message to this guy and then you can have kind of a role playing interactive experience there where, Whatever happens, because the Star Wars universe, there's just stuff, you know, popping off all the time, like crazy things erupting out of nowhere and bar fights and all kinds of lightsaber duels. And yeah, there's just going to be a lot of action everywhere. So if we can incite that and get the the park guests involved in like, I was trying to give that guy this message and, you know, he got shot or his arm got chopped off or whatever. Um, It'd be pretty uh, exhilarating experience. Yeah, and you could even have like set pieces where like let's say once every three hours or something mm-hmm. like that, you have these actors that do stuff like that, right? That you have this kind of Obi-Wan character or maybe Obi-Wan himself, right? Mm-hmm. That gets into an argument with someone in the bar and the people are like sitting there eating that are just normal, you know, uh, ticket holders that uh-huh. are just there for the day hanging out. Like all of a sudden these people start yelling at each other, you start looking around and all of a sudden somebody's <laughs> arm is off. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> right? It could be a lot of fun and have like oh, those yeah. set pieces all over the park and doing I mean, maybe reenacting scenes from movies or just kind of making up new stuff that could be kind of cool, mm-hmm. uh, bringing, you know, getting kids involved. And if you're a stormtrooper, you know, and you see uh, a Jedi, you start chasing them, you know, things like that. That's pretty cool. And the, yeah, there's so much room for kind of emergent role playing kind of stuff that I think will yeah. happen at the the Disney parks as well. Um, and they'll have to figure out a way of, of wrangling that sometimes. Cause you know, like, uh, any kind of improv session, things can kind of get a little bit wild and someone yeah. needs to kind of guide you back to, to the status quo. Cause it's not a, a super happy universe. You know, there's a lot of dark right. stuff, there's slavery, there's all kinds of exploitation going on in this yeah. universe, but it is also a very fun and cool and characteristic world that people want to go to still. Um, yeah, but yeah, the, well, that's especially, the especially Tatooine. Cause yeah. Tatooine is like this lawless, you know, there's no em- empire, nothing right. going on. And so, yeah, it's it's a dark place, a seedy place, you might say, where mm-hmm. smugglers hang out and people shoot each other and cut each other's arms off in bars and that's just normal. Everybody yeah. goes back to playing music. Right, you know, right. Uh, it's, it's that kind of place. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, cool. The One thing I would really love to explore are the sand crawlers, which are yeah. these huge, they're former mining vessels that the Jawas have taken over. But there's a scene where you see all the droids and all the things that have been kind of captured. It's like an antique shop almost in the Star Wars universe. And just having a, even just a walking tour through a sand crawler that's like a, a museum of, of droid stuff would be so yeah. cool. And it doesn't that's have to awesome. be labeled like a museum, but just like a tour of seeing all these cool special effects and all the cool droid designs. And it's just a really neat, um, quiet, dark resting place kind of thing you know might be a good place to get some air conditioning if you've been pod racing all day yeah uh, just take a little tour with the javas or whatever go shop it and see what they're selling that day yeah yeah and this is also i mean this is a theme park it's got to make money and so this is a great place to sell stuff yeah uh, and you, and i was trying to think through like having different stores that showed up in different parts uh-huh. as well kind of have you know very similar but different different stuff you can buy but kind of the same idea right and so i, I think this would be like the the luke's luke skywalker's second hand store uh-huh. or yeah, because he yeah. fixes up all kinds of stuff, you know, and and actually well, Anakin did hand. too. Had to get a second. He had a second. <laughs> second. Now I get it. <laughs> oh my god. Luke's Luke's second hand store. Oh, you might no. Or you can buy a droid or whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> my mind immediately jumped to seeing that little his like his home, and he's got that little garage where he's like working yeah. on ships and stuff. Second hand that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Uh, but yeah, that's that's really cool. And you can see his like little workshop. And I mean, Anakin had a workshop. I don't know if it's in the exact same place, you know, where he was like fixing up C-3PO and stuff. So you can include some of those elements. I also just love those homes. The little like round dwellings that they have on Tatooine are really cool. 
Just yeah, walking through those would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. What else is on Tatooine that we would want to get to? Well, I think you, you definitely need to have the huts there yeah. somehow. Yes. Uh, and you could definitely work up a, a sponsorship with Pizza Hut <laughs> and throw an extra tea on there. Uh-huh. And that's, you know, so you have like different restaurants around. I feel like what makes a lot of sense. But yeah, having like the, the big brown, his, his, like his, um, kind of sounds like a castle. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a big palace kind of thing. Uh-huh. It had a really cool shape to it. Yeah. And yeah, that could be a thing and have a rancor. You know, maybe like a giant rancor. Maybe, you know, I feel like. If you go to Universal Studios and some of these places, they have these like really amazing shows. Mm-hmm. You know, it happens X number of times a day. And having a Rancor battle as a show that has this like giant animatronic kind of thing and all these like lights and, and smoke and oh. explosions and stuff. Yeah. Almost like the Waterworld uh, show. Mm-hmm. That, I don't know if it's there anymore, but I, I went to Universal a while back. Like the Waterworld show was so cool. The movie was trash. Right. But the show at Universal was amazing. Uh-huh. And so you could do a lot of those really cool things and just make them Star Wars themed. Totally. I love that idea. And I like the idea of people being able to be a bounty hunter or be a Jedi or whatever. And then if you try to go to the Hut's palace and you're a bounty hunter, that's fine. Come hang out, you know, have some drinks or whatever. Because there's always just a bunch of people kind of hanging out in the background in those scenes. Yep. And then if you're a Jedi, you know, you might be arrested and brought in and then drop down and have to battle the Rancor. If you can't negotiate correctly with with Jabba or whichever hut is currently in charge that sounds yeah. really cool and it'd be fun to do um just like be in a room observing this action going down like we were kind of talking about in Mos Eisley Cantina just even if you're not the the star the one who's being interacted with by this character who's wearing all this makeup and this character like crazy monster person it'd be cool to just observe that and realize that's just a part guest right there. Like that is not Mm -hmm. a trained employee who's here. (laughs) And even if you're not firsthand part of the action being secondhand, uh, secondhand, um, (laughs) would be, would still be a ton of fun and being just a a bystander when someone gets dropped in the rancor pit and then you get to like run over to the edge and, you know, watch the the battle would be so exhilarating. Right. (sighs) And I think you mentioned a good, uh, another potential corporate sponsor with bounty paper towels. (laughs) And so, like, this is about money, man. We got we to make this money to keep this place going. Oh, yeah. And so we got Pizza Hut, and we got Bounty, and there's probably more to come. Absolutely. As far as, uh, as this goes. But. We'll keep our eyes open. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. The um the Skiff was always one of my favorite ships on yeah, Tatooine. Yeah, with the Sarlacc pit. Yeah, and the Sarlacc yeah, pit. Be, now, that could be a really cool slide, uh-huh. right, where where maybe you go from the skiff and you go down the slide and you drop into this like dark hole that's yeah. you know shaped like the Sarlacc and you don't know where you're going and it takes you to this really cool other place of the other part of the park. That's really neat. And maybe there's just like a trampoline or something. You fall, you know, eight feet. It's not like a huge drop down there, but you, you slide yeah. down. Because that's cool too. You could just kind of jump off that little, um, like that little barge thing that's got the, uh, mm-hmm. like a diving board off the edge almost. They're, yeah. they're making Luke walk the plank. Maybe you have to do that. You actually jump off and then like land and mm-hmm. slide down. I don't know if it'd actually be sand or like some kind of soft, rubbery kind of material mm-hmm. or something, but slide down the slide into the Starlight Pit. That sounds really cool. And then yeah, absolutely. you just get stuck down there for an eternity, I guess. You get slowly digested. And yeah, yeah. If, if the cannon holes, you know, if, if, if that holds right. up based on the Or maybe way that's the changed. exit to the theme park. It's like, you're dead. Bye. Here's the <laughs> that's exit. How you go. That's how you get out. You're, you go wait in the, the car. Your family will be out in a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Tatooine. It's a lot of desert. Um, yep. I don't know if having a moisture farm exhibit would be that interesting or not. <laughs> Probably not. I don't think it would be that cool. No, that'd have to be like a, a place to just buy drinks or something like that. Uh-huh. The moisture farm. Oh, that's Where smart. you just go in and get a, get a Coke or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that's neat. Um, hmm. You could do some little mini game kind of experience or like a role playing yeah. kind of thing. Like, um, where you're kind of like the thing with the huts where you're kind of negotiating with a bounty hunter. Maybe, you know, you're behind on your, your payments, kind of like Han Solo and, you know, you have to shoot the guy or like negotiate. You have to come to some kind of conclusion with this guy. Are you going to pay him double or are you going to like have to shoot him? And you got to figure out some kind of way of, of working through that. And like, those are kind of the struggles you'll come up against as a bounty hunter or a smuggler, which are totally different than the issues you'll come up with against as like a stormtrooper or as a Jedi, you know, they're going to, you're going to have different shortcomings and different, uh, unique experiences you get into based on your role. All right. Um, shall we leave Tatooine? 
Yeah, let's go. You good? So Yavin, there's actually a moon on Yavin. Right. Where the rebel base was, and they had this, like, giant, like, the temple, is it Mas- Masazi or something like that, uh, temple that they were based out of uh-huh. in that first movie, right? Uh, and so you could have this really cool, amazing set that you go into this temple kind of thing, and you see all the the X-Wings and the Y-Wings, like, all this stuff in the control room. And it could be really cool. A lot of role-playing opportunities there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the, the big ride could be a roller coaster that's that simulates the trench run to blow yes. up the first Death Star. Right. right? And so that's you're the, going through the trench and the battle of Yavin was like a huge thing. Like that's kind of yeah. when they're the way that they number their years in the Star Wars universe, yeah. zero is the battle at Yavin, which is pretty crazy. Yavin four. Um right. but yeah that's that's awesome. The trench run would be an incredible experience. And even just those kind of you know rogue squadron style just having some little arcade machines almost where you're you're flying a, an X-wing would be yeah. fantastic. It'd be so fun and like such a cool, you know, wish fulfillment that, you know, every person watching Star Wars when they were, you know, a kid, they're like, "Oh my gosh, I want to fly one of these spaceships." It'd be cool to just give them an opportunity to do that. And if it's located in, you know, the rebel base on Yavin like that, that'd be incredible. Yeah, for sure. And you have like the the scene where, you know, Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon comes in and say kind of helps you save the day and Darth Vader gets blast it off into space and and you you blow up the whole thing and because you could have a really cool giant death star maybe not as big as the epcot mm-hmm. golf ball right but you could have this really cool thing one. where the roller coaster kind of goes in and out oh, around it wow and, yeah and then what you do is you have that almost at a, at a diagonal to indoor and we can talk about indoor in a minute uh-huh. but you have the exact same death star kind of thing but on one side it's the complete death star and on the other side with the indoor rides and stuff it's the in you know under construction still death star and so you could use the same big set piece but on one side it looks different from from the other and so it could be a really cool thing and are you picturing this being outside or would it be indoor oh thank you it might be indoors. thank you very Ho-ho. much we uh... are here we're here two weeks so. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Uh, but no, that sounds super cool on Yavin. Um, yeah, there's not a ton else that really happens on that planet, but it is just a cool place to have like the hangar and the kind of, mm-hmm. I think it's like a Mayan temple in real life that they use for the exterior mm-hmm. shots. So just yep. having that kind of, um, you know, that those ruins or whatever those technically are from, from that race that died out or whatever, it'd be mm-hmm. cool to just kind of explore these. There's some kind of quiet, um, exploration kinds of areas that I'd be really interested in going to, um, especially that are on some of the more um, boring planets, you could say, where there's not going to be as many roller coasters, not as much stuff going on. Just right. having these little side areas where it's like you can kind of just explore these ruins or, or check out the cool, like, you know, history here that this was the Rebels. I don't know if it's their first base, but it was their base um, before they moved to Hoth. And just kind of seeing, like, this moment in the Star Wars history would be really cool. Definitely. And whenever you leave the trench run roller coaster, so you go off, you know, go down the exit ramp or whatever, uh-huh. and it comes into like this giant throne room where the da da da, like the really oh, cool yes. epic music's playing. And for the low, low price of nineteen ninety five, you can buy one of those medals, and a actress looking Princess like Leia. Princess Leia will oh. place it on you for you know nineteen ninety five. And so again, more product opportunity and more opportunities to sell I really cool it. stuff oh, and make it thematic. That is awesome. Let's yeah. see. Was that from A New Hope? Yeah. Yeah. So you could mm-hmm. charge 1977. It might be people no, would be happier to pay that price. <laughs> yep. Um, Absolutely. no, that's, that's awesome. I really like that idea. And it'd be cool to be able to take the role of Han Solo. Like maybe there's, you know, two different roller coasters that go over the same mm-hmm. area. And yeah. one of them is the TIE fighter and the other one's the Millennium Falcon. And they kind of, although the scale might be a little weird. Because if you're sitting in a little tiny one-person vehicle and then you just have, like, the X-Wings shooting off your side and it, the whole thing's three feet wide, it might be a little, like, mm-hmm. feel like a go-kart version. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Yeah, the details. Yeah, Minor this details. is just a rough outline. Right, but you could even have, like, you know those those rides that shoot you way up real fast? Uh-huh. You, you could have one of those that looks like a Millennium Falcon that's right there next to the trench run that's... And if you yes. can figure out a way to time it, right? right. So as the X-Wing's coming by and the Falcon comes oh, up and like becomes a, a thing. And then when I let's say back in the day at Six Flags over Georgia, they had a, a, a road coaster called the Viper. And it, it literally lasted like six seconds. And all it did was it launched you out at like 80 miles an hour. And you did a loop and you went up and then you came right back down and did the loop backwards uh-huh. and back into the into the tunnel, right? And so you could do that kind of thing with like a Darth Vader type deal. And so you time everything up. So when the Falcon comes Whoa. in, Darth Vader is like, 
bounced back and, and you know does a, a backwards loop the loop to leave the scene as you're coming down the trench run and then you know you have sparks that fly off the Death Star as you blow it up and that kind of thing that, it, it could be amazing that is so cool I love the idea of having the timing of all those things appear at yeah. once because a lot of coasters they'll have a moment where it's kind of slow and you get to like pause for a second and take in the scenery mm-hmm. and then you go back into the action like doing that yeah. where it's like oh my gosh there's Darth Vader again and there's like is that the Millennium Falcon? Are you serious? And then like yeah. you get back into the, the ride itself. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I love that so much. That's super cool. Let's go Dagobah. Sure. This next one. Now, cause this is, this is a, a different, totally different deal. Yeah. Right. Cause Tatooine is a desert Yavin forest, but it's really, it's really space. I mean, that's really, right. no one cares about Yavin, really the planet. It's really more about the space True. battle off in the, uh, outside of Yavin. Uh-huh. And so Dagobah, totally brand new deal. Right, and your your ex, however you get there, right, however, whatever ride you get there, uh, your X wing can like land and hit, and water flies up or something like that, and so yeah. like you're crashing your X wing in there, um, and and it's all swampy, right, and so again, this is why I think like L A or San Diego would be really cool because you can kind of create this atmosphere, and unless you're in Florida and it's already swampy, there you go, you don't have to create anything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's got this really cool vibe, and it's kind of it's got a lot of trees, and or at least fake trees. And it's dark, and it's kind of smoky and and weird. And uh, Yoda is around, and so the main ride over there would be like this really awesome swamp ride, where it's like you're you're in the raft and you're going around, and there's like waterfalls, and there's you know maybe stormtroopers come up on the on the bank and shoot at you. Like, I don't know, you could add some stuff to it. And maybe it's not. There's super all those canon. creepy monsters and stuff in the swamp too yeah. that you'd have to like run away from. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's yep. that's cool. Doing like a jungle cruise kind of thing, but maybe a little more frantic. Right, and you go into a tunnel, and there's the Darth Vader scene oh, where Luke yeah. and Vader are fighting, and then the, the helmet blows up, and like you see Luke's face. Like there's you could you could reenact that. Just go in into a tunnel mm-hmm. in the swamp, right? And you know, coming out of the other side, and yeah, it could be really fun. You could have a log flume. You could, have, I mean, that could really be the water. You can make that a water park uh-huh. if you wanted to, like a water side of the park, and kind of go over there and cool off before you head on to another place. I love that in Dagobah actually did have like a wet season for like half of the year so you could do- yeah. totally just say this is wet season that's why there's a little more running water than you see in the movie that was the dry season um that is awesome you could also do some cool stuff with the vines there's that that kind of tarzan-ish yeah. moment during luke's training that's really yeah. neat and suppose maybe there's rocks where you have to stack rocks kind of do that yeah too? that you could do like little um physical challenges kind of things <laughs> like i always remember in high school like the the Marines recruiter guy would come and he'd have like a chin up bar and see who could do the most push ups. Yeah. It's like, we could have done this without you guys, but it's kind of fun now that you guys are here and you brought your little thing and you're challenging us. Like, yeah. we could all try these these little things. You know, you could have that, like, try to, you know, do this while you're wearing this, like, heavy Yoda backpack. Um, oh, yeah, big cool. And do the little vine swing. And, but yeah. you could was, have like a ninja warrior kind yeah, of vibe where you obstacle have to create course. this giant obstacle course. Yes. And, yeah. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. And this is a good place for Jedi training. Um, Dagobah, for some reason, has a really strong connection to the Force, which is really mysterious yeah. to me that like a location right. has that, even mm-hmm. though it doesn't have much history with the Force. But anyway, you could. this could be a place where you give anyone who's there, regardless of if they're, they're Force-sensitive or not, have them get those kind of Force visions, like you said, with the, the Vader in the cave kind of thing. It's like everyone can experience the Force here, even if you're not traditionally you know a force user where you get access to those force experiences in other areas everyone gets that on dagobah because it's just mm-hmm. kind of in the air there yeah um, and depending on how you created your your role-playing system like maybe you have to level up like maybe you're mm-hmm. there's certain levels and going to de- going to dagobah is a way that you level up if you're a jedi you, you go from level one to level two totally kind of. i think that's really cool um and along those lines i always thought it was cool that in the like star wars role-playing games that i used to play in college like the pen and paper games um, Jedi, and this happens in the Star Wars canon too, Jedi build their own lightsabers like when they're in training yeah. and right. they it's based on this thing called a kyber crystal and that always just seems mm-hmm. so fascinating to me that you build this technology using this ancient like gemstone thing right. and it makes a lightsaber. And that's what gives it, the, gives it the certain color too, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you get to build your own. Like there's the part of me that likes mm-hmm. building model kits. There's a part of me that likes gemstones. Everybody likes lightsabers. Like there's so many cool little details to this. Right. And kind of building your own character, you get to develop your own lightsaber and maybe add new little trinkets onto it throughout your journey and it grows with you and it's like a scrapbook of your journey Mm -hmm. that's also like an amazing uh weapon at the same time but yeah that'd be really cool if you get to kind of build up your character like you were saying and kind of develop your own lightsaber if you're a force user um but i was thinking the kyber crystals could be things that you you hide throughout the park 
I mean, find them through doing like little side missions. You know, someone says yeah. like there was this weird shiny thing on this corner of Dagobah or whatever. And then like you go there and you try to find your Kyber, Kyber crystal. And if you're working for the empire, maybe you're trying to use that to build a weapon or like new order. Their um, star killer base was powered by a lot of Kyber crystal stuff. So maybe like, no matter who you are, you're trying to get those. If you're a smuggler, you can sell them for a lot. If you're a Jedi, you need it for your lightsaber. And then if you're a bad guy, you know, you're trying to build a strong, like huge weapon that can destroy planets. Yeah. So yeah, it's just another little thing that everyone can be developing in their own way and competing for the same resources. Although, you know, you and your mom and your dad might not all be Jedi. You can all be kind of going into the same experiences. Yeah, definitely, and and also for the low low price of nine ninety nine ninety five. You know, it's, again, it's it's product. You're you're oh, yeah. selling a thing that's also incredibly thematic, and it's fun, and it's cool, and so it, everybody wins, right? The totally. park's making money, the kids and the, the people there are getting a really cool quest, a really cool thing to do, and oh. you get to take it home, right? right? So you've built this thing, and you can always remember your time at the Star Wars theme park, right. you know, and put it on your mantelpiece. And it's got to be a high quality thing that's going to hold up to, you yeah. know sitting on your mantle for years and years and bring it right. to the park back with you every time. So you can level up your character to, you know, a higher level and continue yeah. your character's story, even though you've been in a different sector of the, the universe, you know, for the last two years, you're coming back again next summer and you'll bring your yeah, now that's a really, that's a really interesting thought. Almost having two tracks, right? You have the one track for people. This is the only time they're going to come, uh -huh. right? They're going to, and so kind of uh -huh. have them on the speed the speed track, so to speak, yeah. of doing, you know, and hitting the highlights. That's the one day and then pass. you can have a slower, yeah, the oh. one day pass. Then you can have a slower, you know, I've got a season pass. I'm going to, I plan to do this five times. And so put them on a slower track, but they get to do more stuff, right? Yeah. You're going to hit all the highlights for sure. But then there's all these like extra side quests and side oh, things going on cool. that you get the full experience by showing up multiple times. Yes. I love that. And then the kind of role playing stuff, the little side quests, they just seek out the people who are season pass holders. Um, yeah. Because, the, you know, the people who are trying to knock out the whole thing in one day, they don't really have time to be helping this little droid with his little thing. But someone who's, like, trying to get 10 more experience points or whatever so they can learn a new force power, they want to do every little thing they can do. They're trying to be a little little Boy Scouts running around helping everybody. That sounds, yeah, sure. sounds awesome. I love that. And I just said force powers, like, not really thinking about it, but having interactive areas where if you have you know, the force push ability, then this little experience can happen, you know, like a little mm, carnival yeah. game or something that no one else gets access to unless they have the force push ability. Um, yeah. Be really Cause they've good. got like those fast pass bracelets, uh -huh. right? And so surely we're in a time now where they could have these different things engineered into those kinds of bracelets oh, yeah. that would unlock certain things based on maybe based on what level you were at, you uh -huh. know, maybe, maybe you're able to kind of keep track of your thing. Maybe you can do it online through an app, mm -hmm. through your phone, and maybe you can kind of design what your character looks like and you see what powers oh, they have and like cool. what you need to do next level or like what, what are your side quests? Like, okay, you need to go find R2D2 oh, yeah. in most likely. Okay, cool. And so you can kind of keep track of everything. So you're not just having to remember it. Um, and then that bracelet would be kind of your, the, the gizmo that kind of, unlocks all this stuff yes that's fantastic and it'd be really cool too if when you're in the app it looks like it's something from the star wars like the screen yeah. is really kind of 80s looking and like not everything functions totally well and it's not very well designed i mean it's designed to look like it's not well designed right. you know it feels like it's something a piece of technology from the star wars universe where it's not going to be like using an iphone it's going to be a little bit more right. archaic and a little bit more special and unique and have maybe some hidden secrets in it Oh, that's awesome, man. I love that. Cool. Um, anything else in Dagobah that you can think of? I don't think so. I mean, Dagobah wasn't used that much right. in the movies, and so there's not a ton of stuff going on, but I feel like you could really play it up and, and add a lot of really cool stuff yeah. uh, to make it make it awesome. Having Yoda do some training and give you yeah. a tour of his house would be really cool. I don't know how they would do right. the Yoda figure, but eh, I don't know. Some kind of animatronic that can walk. Would be nice, yeah. or just or even a, just have him on screens. Yeah, you know? <clears throat> true. He could be a force ghost. I mean, maybe that's, yeah, that's kind of I don't know, macabre maybe, but we know that that's his ultimate fate, and that he dies on this planet. He could just be on this planet, like giving you a tour uh, mm -hmm. after he's moved on and insulting and, you. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> he still has a lot of, you know, I'm sure he still plays a role. And once a force user dies, they become one with the force, and they can become yeah. a force spirit whenever they want to. So. Yeah, and so the cool thing about the set design, and so Dagobah, you've got a lot of trees, and, and then you can just kind of move into the, not really a rainforest, but just kind of the more foresty kind mm -hmm. of area. So it kind of 
and even Yavin, right? Yavin, Yavin's got a lot of trees. Yeah. And so you can kind of build the sets to kind of flow into oh, each cool. other and, and become something. Else. So it doesn't feel like such a, uh, like all of a sudden, like, no, no, it's, it just kind of flows into each other. Yeah. And it'd be um, cool if there were real trees too. Like if they could actually build yeah, this yeah. in a forest, like that'd be amazing mm-hmm. to keep some, some nature there where it, it doesn't, not everything's a big plastic tree. It's like, this is actually right. a forest. Like that'd be pretty cool. So yeah, yeah. Yavin, I mean, Endor. The forest moon with the little Ewoks and um, this was probably my favorite favorite scene in the original trilogy when I was a kid. I just love the Ewoks and all the little jungle action. There's a lot of like hijinks and the bad mm-hmm. guys getting beat up and a lot of fun little traps and stuff. It's a fun fun place. I mean, I know there's a lot of action, a lot of people die and stuff, but <laughs> considering the number of like cool set pieces you could do here, like this one's got a huge yeah. potential. Yeah, for sure. I think having a ride that emulates the speeder bike chase uh-huh. and it goes in and, and around the trees and, you know, that could be really cool and just have a, you know, it doesn't have a lot of loops or anything like that. It's just super fast and it, you know, winding and, and goes up and down and yeah, that could be a lot of fun. Oh, I would love that. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. That'd be fantastic. And Those are I'll... some of my favorite vehicles for sure. And then it's yeah, already and then... like a roller coaster vehicle for the most part. Yeah, absolutely. Know? Yeah. Right. And then also having the the treehouse village like i feel like this would be a place where kids would love to hang out like you're saying the ewoks and you have this treehouse village it's not super high off the ground but you could have lots of shops and restaurants and different things where you kind of go up in the trees and you know you you visit and explore and maybe you meet people maybe that's part of some of your side quests you go meet people these you know different ewoks different characters from the movies and yeah it could be a really cool just kind of go hang out uh kind of place that's awesome yeah and that's in the story, that's where they had to go to knock out the shield generator yep. to get access to the Death Star, Death Star right. 2. So it's got a lot of cool, like you said, like things you can just kind of explore around, mm-hmm. but then there's a lot of, of Empire presence there and a yeah. lot of things you have to accomplish as a rebel so that you know your teammates who are, who are over yeah. there ready to attack the Death Star can, can get access to it. So yeah, and you could have like a laser tag kind of, Mm-hmm. attraction that is that battle that's that battle at the the shield generator you know when they were trying to get inside uh-huh. and you could have a really cool like laser laser tag course wow so. yeah if they figure out technology where it you you know you fire the laser gun and you see the little beam shoot out and it looks like star <laughs> yeah. wars yeah. oh my gosh i would right. probably become a professional uh laser tag player at that point because <laughs> I, I wouldn't be able to think about anything else like that's the coolest thing i've ever heard of mm-hmm. laser tag's already awesome it just doesn't look that awesome like you can't tell right. <laughs> if you hit somebody or not you know what i mean right yeah <sighs> but yeah that would be incredible that'd be so much fun yeah. and pretty harrowing and, too you know you'd get pretty yeah. pretty spooked if like a bunch of you know stormtroopers pop up behind you and you got to hide behind this log and Yep. Try to signal your friends. That's so fun. I love that. Yep. Um, let's and then see. you could have another uh, Death Star assault, basically, mm-hmm. right? Coaster or ride, and you just use the back half of the Death Star prop yeah. kind of thing. And yeah, this time maybe you're in the, the Millennium Falcon, maybe you're in a different ship, uh, maybe you're hanging out with Admiral Atbar, I don't know. But you, you kind of go through another, not, not so much trench thing, like you make it very, very different. But you could have a very similar kind of ride. And I don't know if it should be another coaster necessarily, but just have some kind of uh, attraction where you get to experience that. I love that. That's really cool. I also like the idea of, of the inside of your cockpit having like a little monitor or some kind of communicator where you talk to the other people who are, you know, supposedly on your, in your fleet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can hear Akbar, And like you said, you can hear Porkins. You can hear everybody else who like says something yeah. during those scenes in the movie. You actually hear that in your ear and you hear the little mm-hmm. chatter that happens when you're, when you're flying a spaceship, like make it as interactive yeah. and immersive as possible. Oh, yeah. That's Definitely. wonderful. And speaking of Admiral Akbar, I feel like there should be a restaurant in the park uh-huh. called it's a wrap <laughs> and you can get wraps and you know, healthier food. Uh huh. It's a wrap. And then, uh, for the 21 and up crowd, there's the act bar behind that. The egg bar. That's to... right. <laughs> no, that's great. Hey, while we're, it's while a we're on a roll, I feel like in the uh, indoor, like tree city kind of thing, there should be a mall there, but mm-hmm. you spell it M-A-U-L, and everything <laughs> there is half off. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's too much. That's really good, though. Yep. Um, it'd also be cool if the, if It's a Wrap is located, like, on your way out of the theme park, and it's like the mm-hmm. movie's over, so, like, they film it, finish filming, and, yep. you know, that's a wrap, and, oh. Yeah. It's like the super healthy uh, vegan yeah. restaurant or something. Totally. <laughs> I would dig that. That's awesome. Yep. Um. Cool. 
I I love Endor. I'm I'm super excited about that idea. Um, it'd be cool to be able to do something with the um, ATSTs as well. Those little chicken walkers. Um, yep. I always thought that was a really cool scene when Chewbacca is like inside one piloting it. Yeah. It would be a neat, like even just a little motion coaster where, you know, you're trying to mm-hmm. pilot it and you just feel the movement of it going up and down as it walks. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. You've got like the big screen and you can kind of shoot stuff. It's almost like a video game. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Basically you could do those little arcade type experiences mm-hmm. all over the place. I mean, there are probably a hundred different star Wars video games you can basically pull from. Just yeah. make a cool little arcade cabinet that's really immersive and has a really nice, high-quality screen, and there you go. Yeah, definitely. And if those games would would add on to your character, like if you can develop your character, your piloting skills, let's say if you're a pilot, by playing these games, like that'd be so awesome for someone who really likes games like that. You're actually making progress that transcends any one individual video game. Which, yeah. that's another thing that's going to totally ruin my life when that technology gets there. Is if I have an avatar I can take from this game to that game to this game, and he can bring his skills with him or whatever, mm-hmm. I'm done. I will I will become <laughs> no a more waste podcasting. to society, and I'll just play that <laughs> yeah. game every day, all the time. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> but, I mean, I think that'd be really cool to be able to feel yeah. like you're accomplishing something as a character, and not just like, uh, I'm playing a dumb video game. Right. Yeah. For sure. Um, let's see. Is there anything else you want to do on Endor? No, I think that's it. I mean, you can do lots of really cool, uh, like ropes course kind of thing where you have the, the different, well, not, not really a ride, but just some, uh, another obstacle course kind of thing, right? Where you're going through the trees and you've got ropes and vines and, and different things you're you know, jumping over and climbing over and Ewoks are, you know, throwing stuff or the stormtroopers are throwing stuff. Like you can have a lot of fun with it. That was a really cool thing too, is seeing the, the technology of the empire versus the Ewoks, like stone mm-hmm. tools, um, very primitive, but also very effective weaponry. It's kind of, it'd be cool to be able to help the Ewoks and set up those little traps where the rope, the tree trunks like swing down and smash the, uh, ATST. That kind of stuff is neat. When you see the underdog kind of, you know, take on someone with a higher technology, better weaponry and, and have that victory. And then also right. at nighttime having, you know, I don't know if we're going to have fireworks in this place, but maybe the next best thing would be to have that kind of celebration. Like we won, the empire's defeated everyone across all the planets is celebrating at night. Um, cause I always loved that, that scene at the end of uh, return of the Jedi. I thought it was really cool. Um, yeah. The little drums made out of all the different helmets of the Empire and the Force Ghosts are there and just really cool. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that's fun. Some other things I was thinking about, like this wouldn't be like specific to any section of the park, but you just do general kind of things. You could have like a a race every year that maybe you raise money for something, cancer awareness, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you call it the Kessel Fun Run. Oh, cool. And so it's like a 5K (laughs) in the Kessel Fun Run. Um, That's awesome. And then... yeah, and I thought a lot about like different things you could have in the restaurants and whatnot. And so I wrote like a little list. Like, if you go to like a maybe maybe one of the desserts on one of the menus is the uh, chocolate chocolate chip Wookie <laughs> or chocolate chip Wookie cake or something like that. Like, that could be fun. Uh, you could get Sith kebabs, um, Darth Tater Tots. <laughs> like, so like the sky is the limit for this stuff. There's so many. Yeah, oh yeah the people gosh. that serve you are are Darth waiters. Um. Uh, one of the restaurants could be called Use the Forks. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's really good. Or at least that's yeah. a sign you have to put on the rest you know, on the yeah. the wall of the restaurant. Right. Use the forks. Right. And the Kessel Fun Run needs to be on May the fourth, obviously, mm-hmm. every year. Uh, <laughs> and as far as another corporate sponsor, Lando Lakes Butter, I feel like it's a good one. And you have like Lando Calrissian on the front of there or something. Yep. Like <laughs> limited edition yeah, package of, of Lando sure. Lakes. <laughs> Lando Lakes. Oh, oh. But hey, what what planet was Cloud City on? Um, I think it's called Bespin. Okay. I which uh, which area was that? Inner was that the inner ring? I think so. Inner I ring? think it's a core okay. system. Gotcha. Uh, man, yeah, like this, like you were saying earlier, the universe is so ripe with just a billion different options and opportunities, and lots of fun things you can do with so many different characters and alien races and puns and like lots of yeah. Oh man, I, I'm excited to see what they come up with, right? Because I'm sure it's going to be amazing. And I, I believe uh, they're start, they're setting it on a new planet that none of the the films or anything have have been hmm. on so far. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Okay. And then they can use that as the base and expand on it in the movies and stuff, but yeah. 
because otherwise you're just sampling a little tiny piece of this amazing huge universe and letting people explore this tiny little thing. But it's better to say, here's this new little glimpse, this tiny little glimpse of something new. So it's much more exciting that way. Instead of just being like, here's that one scene from that movie. It's like, yeah, here are a bunch of scenes from no movie yet. Like right. check it out. When it's ex- actually a really good, it's really smart because mm-hmm. all right, no matter what, you're always going to remember things better than they were. Like that's just kind of typical of your True. childhood. Like if you go back and watch TV shows we used to watch when we were kids are garbage. Like if you go back and yes, watch them now, it's like, wow, them. I can't believe I like this. Yeah. yeah. And so you remember it way better than it actually was. And so by starting new and starting on a new planet, new characters, new stuff going on, you don't run into, Oh, this is not as good as I hoped or not as good as I thought it would be. Like you don't run into that like nostalgia block kind of thing. And so it's a really, that's really smart. That's awesome. Yeah. They're, they're doing it well. I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what they come up with. Um, yeah. Because it's it's similar to what I would do if I had unlimited money, but I'm sure that they'll execute it much better and they won't get sued as bad as I was. Because <laughs> they will have thought yeah. through everything a lot more. Yeah, absolutely. No no little kids breaking their arms right. on, the, on the ride. Exactly, because yeah. this, this show is pretty uh, fly by the seat of your pants. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we designed this whole thing in an hour and a half or whatever. And then they're, I'm sure they've spent... 10 years planning for a star Wars theme yeah. park before it'll right. actually paid, open. paid lots of professionals and engineers and, yes. and people with much better brains than ours. <laughs> right. <laughs> Precisely. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see this star Wars series kind of expand out like the amusement yeah. park series, even just like mm-hmm. to cover more and more areas. And if you could take your character from one of the parks to another park, it'd be really cool. Cause it would, it would represent yeah. their voyage going from the outer rim to the inner rim, which is, you know, not mm-hmm. an easy short task. Um, so yeah, it kind of makes sense that it might take you a while to get back to the other place and then get back into your, your mission that you were on last summer, you know, you're on it again this summer. It's like, well, yeah, I've been, you know, you can come up with your story reason of why you've been gone. Uh, Mm Um, it's really cool. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. Um, most of the other things I had written down for those other eight or nine planets in the outer rim were mostly like little story vignettes, like little things Mm. I could see little interactive experiences that I would could do there, but there's not as many yeah. uh, cool like roller coasters and stuff like that. Um, but we could always come back and add those in later if we wanted to, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I thought would be really cool to see is the, a planet called, I don't know how to say it, Utapau, Utapau, something like that. Um, it's a planet with like extreme winds all over and then these huge mm. sinkholes. So the inhabitants have started building all of the, their dwellings inside these sinkholes, like in the walls and they don't have any trees because the winds are so strong. So they build everything out of bones. So it just looks (laughs) like these crazy, like skeletal architecture on all the walls of these sinkholes. It just looks really cool. Um, and I thought that'd be an interesting like area just to kind of explore and like have some, you know, role playing kind of things going on in there. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, almost everything else I had, Oh man, Geonosis might be really cool, actually. The droid factory area. Mm -hmm. Um, And they used it as an action set piece, you know, in episode two or whatever that was, two or three. Um, It's just cool cool to be inside of a giant factory that's making robots. And, you know, there's molten, like, uh, steel being poured everywhere. And there's battle droids and a lot of room for cool action and kind of Ninja Warrior type of of things. If you're Mm -hmm. a Jedi and you have to kind of jump from conveyor belt to conveyor belt and swing across this thing and... It's just a cool playground, basically, that's extremely dangerous. Um, but who doesn't want that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what you could do, like this is something they did for the Batman ride in Atlanta hmm. at Six Flags, is the queue line winds around and goes through these different scenes kind of thing. And it's not like actors or set pieces or anything, but like you go into a factory, you go down into the sewer, like you go different places. Oh, cool. And so you could actually have a, a ride or roller coaster that the queue line went through that factory, right? And so you kind of go up and you're like looking down and you see the, the droids being made and conveyor belts and different things happening and uh, that could be just a, a fun way to basically it's a fun way to keep people not worried about how long they're waiting in line right so if you right. have a two-hour wait yep. and you've got other stuff going on it doesn't seem like as long and so that's awesome that sounds super cool um let's see oh, another cool place i thought would be really interesting to just kind of explore is the planet called moraband which is like where the sith started out and mm, yeah. it's been basically inhabit uninhabited for like a thousand years but there's all these like huge monuments and statues of of sith lords and the area is kind of dorky but it's called the valley of the dark lords and Mm -hmm. uh it'd just be cool to kind of explore around there and interact with some some of the 
force ghosts, um, force spirits. I'm sorry, because <laughs> Sith can also do that same thing. They can, you know, bring their their body back in a way, like as a as a spirit. Um, so it'd yeah. be cool to just kind of hear their stories and like walk through this kind of interactive crypt, which is really kind of spooky. But it'd be neat to kind of hear things from the Sith perspective, the historical Sith perspective, yeah. um, which would be kind of interesting. I guess in the Clone Wars animated show, Yoda went through this area when he was learning how to like make sure he goes on to become one with the Force or whatever. Mm-hmm. He goes to the Valley of the Dark Lords and kind of interacts with some of these Sith force spirits which would be kind of a cool experience i think and something that's not represented in the films very much but but it would be a really unique experience yeah because i I think i think several of the films have missed such incredible opportunities to make some awesome characters i feel like darth maul was by far the most interesting character of episode one. like by far he was such an amazing character and he was only in the movie like 12 minutes i know right and then they killed him and it was like oh man like he was such an interesting bad guy and like get some of his backstory and kind of uh, some of that cool stuff and then again again with the the latest movie was snoke i mean snoke was like an epic level bad guy he could he could force choke people through holograms (laughs) you know what i mean like this is like an epic level legendary kind of guy yes and then they killed him because he wasn't paying attention. And I was like, hmm. Like, I was a little bit bothered by the way he went out. I, I was like, it's kind of funny. It's kind of cool. It was But it doesn't funny. make me think, oh, this is an epic level villain. Like, no, he right. just he just got okie doked by Kylo. You know, I was like, yep. oh. But they, they just missed such an opportunity for characterization, like, to really create this awesome dude uh-huh. that then they just killed after he's only, I mean, he wasn't even in the movie hardly at all. And I was I like, know. Well, okay. Such so a... it'd be cool to have, like, some extra stuff. Oh, totally. See, see his his plans at least, or, you know, what he was working yeah. on, but that is the one other planet in the outer rim. I'd like to see would be star killer base, which is a planet. And then they just kind of built this core into it. And it's because it has these yep. really high concentration of Kyber crystals there. They're able to build this huge weapon that basically drains energy from surrounding stars. And like they go out after being used as like the power source for this huge thing. But it's like, just the the landscape is so cool there. Just being like really like cold and mountainous, and I don't know. It, it seemed like a really cool place to explore that kind of uh, first order kind of area with you know General yeah. Hux and with Snoke on the hologram and all that stuff would be really cool. And Captain Fa- Phasma, Phasma, mm-hmm. all that stuff. There's so many oh, cool. Another things. bad guy I want to know more about. I they know. keep just okie doking. They're really like, good at coming in the up world. with cool bad guys and putting them on all the Dorito bags and everything, and then they, yeah. they're dead in the next movie. I'm a little bit frustrated by the new movie. Um, Fair like, enough. There's so many things about it I like, but there's other stuff I was like, gosh, you had such an opportunity for really cool villains. Uh-huh. And I feel like that's something that's missing yeah. from maybe every other movie that's not inside the trilogy because you don't have Darth Vader. You don't, like, right. Kylo Ren is really cool, and I really like him because uh-huh. he's like super – He's super different. Yes. Right? There is nobody in the original trilogy or the first uh, or episode cool. one through three that's like Kylo yeah. Ren. Like he's totally different. Totally. I like him a lot. Yep. But they're missing such incredible opportunities with these other could be awesome bad guys that they're just either throwing away after like ten minutes or they're just not developing or they're getting punked by by people that they shouldn't lose to. Like it just doesn't make sense for them to lose yet. Right. Like, build that up. Yeah. If there's anything I've learned about like from professional wrestling is build the story. Like let the bad guy be really bad yes. and then build it up and have this like really cool WrestleMania moment at the end where the good guy tri- triumphs over evil and it's like yes that's awesome but they're they're not doing it they're they're i don't know yeah it's, it's i annoying. definitely like the idea of of having the the movie end in kind of a gray area it's like did the bad guys just win yeah. like what just happened you yeah. know you strike right back strikes back is amazing right. because the bad guy like you're like holy crap everything has been destroyed the rebels have no chance Han, what are they going to do in the third movie Han's and you want to find it. yeah yeah exactly like everything's bad. Yep. Luke is dis- Luke, the new hope. The hope of the universe is gone. Mm-hmm. Right. That's another thing that bothers me about the new movie. I feel like if I had only ever seen the new movie, I'd have been like, oh, this is pretty cool. Right. But since like there's so much other stuff that they just like retconned and did away with anyway, like the the new hope, Luke, like the one who thought that there was good in Darth Vader, this evil, terrible, totally blacked out everything uh-huh. guy. He said, no, I think there's good in you. Becomes like an attempted child murderer in the new movie. It's like, I feel like you've kind of screwed around with the character a little bit too much. Yeah. But, I get that. Yeah, but, <clears throat> all right. Anyway, like you could have such like really cool stuff going on. If you would just like go a little bit deeper into some of these things. And again, like let, let the bad guys win. Like right. there's a lot of value in that. Um, where where the, the bad guys are, have the upper hand and they're, that lets the, the good guy have that really cool come from behind right. victory in the end. It's it just, like they're it not, sells tickets. The good guys are not the underdog in the new trilogy. At least it feels no. that way. You know, the bad guys keep getting knocked off all the time. 
Whereas mm-hmm. it's fun for the rebellion to be the underdogs. If the rebellion were oppressors, then it wouldn't have been a very powerful <laughs> film. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a, great, that's a weird perspective all of a sudden. Like, wait, who's the oppressor here? <laughs> right. If there were just, if there were 10,000 rebels and a hundred people in the empire, you'd want the empire to win. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just the underdogs got to, I mean, much more compelling, you know, to watch. But yeah, I think the beauty of this theme park is we can kind of play with the timeline a little bit and make it so all the bad guys are still alive and they're all still threats in their perspective, you know, systems, wherever they're, whatever planet they're reigning over, they're a huge threat at the time. And yeah. only you, <laughs> you and your really... party can defeat them, you know? Yeah. And you can have really cool moments. Like if you decide to be somebody from the new movies, well then the new movie bad guys are the ones you're interacting with and dealing with. Mm-hmm. But versus if you decide, I want to be like Luke Skywalker within Darth Vader. It's like you can have different tracks, yeah. different paths for these different RPG kind of, kind of things. Totally. And that could be separated out into different areas. And the way you would navigate that and make sure that someone doesn't go to the wrong one is use the app, you know, say your next mission is sending you to this system and you got to go there to fight this guy. And you can go and just do the other attractions if you want to. But for your story, you, this is the next one you're supposed to go do. You can still ride all the roller coasters. You can still make a day of it, especially if you're one of those day pass people. Um, but if you signed up for the more immersive experience, you better like stick to your, to your track there, or at least stay, keep your head wrapped around what you're trying to accomplish for the day. Yeah, for sure. And this is where you could have a hotel in the park. Mm -hmm. And so the park closes at, we'll say nine o'clock, unless you'd stay in the hotel and you get there, you can stay at the hotel in 30. And so you can do some other stuff and you can, you know, again, you go out every day and you, you get like the three day stay. And so you've got three days to kind of accomplish this mission or Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Gabe, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for being on, man. I think this is a a beautiful start for a fantastic theme park. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate you uh, having me on. Awesome. Well, hopefully uh, your Kickstarter does super well. Hopefully it's already funded by now, you know? Yeah, hopefully so. That'd be great. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. But yeah, so... um, for the audience, if they, if they liked you, I mean, if, big if, if they liked you, um, how could they find out more about, about what you do, your your book, all of your games, that kind of stuff? Yeah, so everything I do goes through the, the Board Game Design Lab, and that's just boardgamedesignlab.com. That's where you can find the podcast and find links to everything else that uh, that I've got going on, whether it's games or books or otherwise. You can get on the email list and get you know all sorts of updates about game design resources and all the things that I'm working on uh, as far as game design. Or if, you, you know, if you're not a game designer, you just want to know more about games and how they're made. you know, got to get the behind-the-scenes, behind-the-curtain look. It's a, it's a really cool place to uh, to do that. It's a great podcast, and you're, just, you're a really good host. Like, It's just kind of nice to just be... Like, you're, you, I don't know, you've got a good presence, like a good welcoming, positive, uplifting kind of vibe. Even if I don't care about or if I've never even heard about what you're talking about, it's like, you know, I trust Gabe. This is going to be a good experience. I think that this is going to be something I'm going to, I'm going to get something out of this experience, out of this podcast. Yeah. So yeah, definitely I really appreciate check that. it out. Sure. And good luck with the final flick tier. Hopefully uh, that is a, a success. We can all get that game shipped out to us next year. 